Welcome to the Relationship Help Show, your time with Dr. Roberta Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor. Through the magic of the internet, Dr. Shaler provides urgent and ongoing care for relationships in crisis to people throughout the world, and she's here for you now. Whether you are experiencing a momentary blow up or the crazy making of life with a partner, ex, child, or parent who is relentlessly difficult, you'll get your questions answered and enjoy her expert guests. Settle in with Dr. Roberta Shaler now. Leave the drama behind and find peace of mind on today's Relationship Help Show. Here's Dr. Shaler. Welcome to the Relationship Help Show, Handling Hijackal Havoc. Today I want to talk with you about something truly important. Of course, every show is important, but maybe you've never thought about the fact that these people that I call hijackals, the difficult, the disturbing, the toxic people that I call hijackals, how they are actually predators. I know it sounds harsh to say that they're predators, but they are. They go looking for people who will accept their behavior. It's almost as though they have this sixth, seventh, and eighth sense that can choose someone who they can predict will put up with their poor behaviors. Now, of course, they don't show them in the beginning. They're smarter than that. They show them their charming side. They show them their seductive side. They show them that they can have insights into you and that you will believe that they truly are attracted to you. In fact, many hijackals, one of the ways that you can tell that you should be on alert is if you date someone and almost before you've started dating, they're saying, I just know I'm going to marry you or I feel like I've known you my whole life and I can hardly wait to spend the rest of my life with you. Or they start talking about how they'd love to have children and they'd love you to be the other parent. And they're already setting you up for disaster, for entrapment. This is the way that hijackals are predators. And it's really important to see that because there's no question that predators are out to destroy their prey. Not only do they trap them and capture them and play with them, but eventually they want to destroy them slowly or quickly, but they want to have complete power over them. So I thought it was very, very important today to talk about how you may fall prey to a hijackal. And you really need to understand this. So today I've brought a guest in, an anonymous guest. You can too be a guest on the show anonymously or otherwise if you would like to tell your story or ask me a question and get some insights about something. If that interests you, you can go to forrelationshiphelp.com slash submit and you can tell your story there or ask your question. And if you're willing to come on air, as I said, anonymously or not, there's a box there for you to check. So if that interests you, you'd like to tell your story to help other people not fall prey to these predators, or if you'd like to ask a question, please be sure to do that for relationshiphelp.com slash submit. Also today, just for today, I have a giveaway which is a new ebook that I wrote about relationship predators. And you can get that at forrelationshiphelp.com slash predators. Forrelationshiphelp.com slash predators. So today I have an anonymous guest who I'm, I'm going to call Jan. And she was willing to come on and say how she even knew better on her wedding day, but she still went through with it, married a hijackal, and then learned just how cruel he could be. And it took her a while to figure it out. And of course, she was like most people. They want to be caring. They want to give the benefit of the doubt. They want to believe better. They get hooked on hope. You've heard me say that before. And so you just keep hoping that the good side that you fell in love with is going to show up someday soon. And while you're seeing all the nasty, you're kind of in denial that that's the real person. You're really hooked on that hope that that wonderful, romantic person who seemed to know you right down to your core and want to please you is in there somewhere. So Jan's going to talk about that and about what was the final straw for her and how she got away. 
Then today I'm the guest because I have a couple of segments on hijackals as predators, and I really want you to understand that at deep levels. And in the end, a big red flag when you're dating, I would like you to see them flying. Because as I've said so many times, when you're dating, it's really hard to see red flags when you're wearing rose-colored glasses. <laughs> and that's what we tend to do when we're dating. We want to see the best in people because we want something wonderful to happen. And that's not necessarily so. Hopefully it is in most cases. But there's going to be the odd hijackal in the mix, and you need to know what to look for and how to recognize it when you see it, how to whip off those rose-colored glasses and see the red flags. So in the last segment today, I am going to tell you four ways to see those red flags when you're dating. So a great show today. Remember to get your free ebook today only at forrelationshiphelp.com slash predators. We're going to hear from Jan and her personal story about how even before she married this person and she went through with the wedding, she knew better. If you want more information, of course, always go to my website for Relationship Help or go to the YouTube channel at For Relationship Help again. So youtube.com slash For Relationship Help. Be sure to subscribe to my weekly tips for relationships and I hope to talk with you really soon. Thanks for being here. Hello, this is Dr. Roberta Shaler. Are these stories and questions on today's show sounding familiar to you? Are you ready to say no more to the abuse from toxic people in your life? I'm so glad. You matter and you deserve to have real love, true love in your life. Love from yourself and love from others. Not that demeaning, discounting and dismissive masquerade that a hijackal pretends is love. I can help you regain yourself, your self-esteem, your self-confidence after a life with a hijackal, whether it was your partner, an ex, a parent, or a child. Let's work together now. For individual sessions or small group coaching, visit forrelationshiphelp.com slash join. Talk soon. So hijackals are predators, and they're on the lookout for new prey all the time. And I know it doesn't feel good to think of yourself as having been prey, because you're quite unwitting prey. You didn't set out to be that, and you didn't know you were being targeted. So today on the program, I have a person who's willing to tell their story and talk about what happened. And as usual, I've given her the option of staying anonymous. In this case, it's a woman. And uh, you can tell your story, too, if you'd like to discuss it on air. Just go to forrelationshiphelp.com slash submit, and that will allow you to send me your story. So welcome to the program, Jen. Hi, thank you. When you, when you had this experience, and we were chatting earlier off air, that it was quite a long time ago, do you think that you actually saw what was happening and you saw some red flags, or did you not really realize what had happened until you were well into the relationship? Well, certainly in the very beginning for the first 13 years that I knew this person, um, I didn't see any red flags. Um, We'd had a, a quite a long knowledge of each other with very short periods of dating, but there's always this flame that was fanned every time we would meet again over those 13 years. And I suppose in my head, he, there, was, there was a very romantic and, and idyllic picture of who he was because I was quite young when I first met him. And, and, and so, yeah, at the beginning, I had no possible there was no possible way he could be anything but the perfect person <laughs> yeah and for those of you listening i bet you're nodding your heads because if you've been with a hijackal you go ah oh, yes the hijackal chameleon the person who puts their best foot forward to get what they want and to give you the impression that they are your next most perfect partner 
Indeed. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's not a surprise uh, that you two had this experience. So when did you first get a little idea that this might not be as idyllic as you thought it would? Um, oh, golly, I can't remember precisely the first, the first incident, but it was, it was certainly after I had agreed to marry him. Um, because at, at that point I was still very much starstruck and, and very much, um, unwilling to think anything could possibly be not perfect about him. Um, and there were, there were a few little things that happened and I thought they were, they were odd and they weren't very comfortable, but I brushed them off and continued on because, you know, he was perfect. <laughs> yeah, and again, you know, everybody's going to be nodding. I've had the experience myself, so I'm nodding too. And that that's the entire game. When you're with a predator, and we have to call them what they are, they're abusive predators. When we're with a predator, their whole thing is to get as close to you as possible, to make you feel dependent on them, to make you feel entranced with them, to have complete power over you without your knowledge. And then when you start to see some cracks in this, you start to recognize that those were, as you say, uncomfortable moments or uncertain moments. If you were like most people, you can you quickly started to justify and rationalize and make excuses for that person. Did you do that? Um, yes, I did. A lot. <laughs> to everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because and pretty much everybody else could see it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think, again, you're, you're certainly in a, a large number of people because from the outside, people can see that you are not being treated well and they can hear you justifying the behaviors. So tell us a little bit about the progress of your relationship. Well, once, once, I, had, once I committed to getting married to this human, um, I think I, I was really tied up in not losing face to the rest of the world for whatever ridiculous reason. Um, there were numerous occurrences over that period. It was probably about a, a year or so, I think, from when we announced that we were going to get married until the actual wedding day. And all sorts of different things came up and, and you know, instances of ridiculous jealousy and really bad possessiveness and and accusations of things that simply were not even remotely possible never mind true and and just poor treatment and then he would he would do things that would that would cause me to feel afraid or to feel um, insecure and then I would express that that was really unfair and I didn't feel good and then he would cry and he would make himself feel vulnerable appear vulnerable and then of course i would comfort him and it would all be okay and we went through that cycle on numerous occasions that's very common many <laughs> many hijackals can cry on cue isn't that awful yes, yes a, a grown man in a puddle on the floor in a bathroom is not a pretty sight and, no no and, and, and it's okay when it's valid but this was not and i i realized too late. This, the, the last time he did that was well after we were married, and and I was like, okay, this is this is just not right. There's no reason whatsoever that you should be crying right now. I'm obviously in the wrong place. Yeah, well, that's one of the things that we have as one of my hallmarks of hijackals is that they have out of proportion emotions, and that's exactly what you're describing here. Like whatever went wrong did not require crying on the bathroom floor. <laughs> and no, yet especially it, when when the reason for that particular incident, um, he he was expressing that he he was feeling very sorry for himself that he had hurt me in this way and and he'd done it so many, 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 many times that I finally stopped believing him. Yeah, there is that turning point, isn't there? When yeah. and you know, I have people in my Facebook group, and of course, you're welcome to look up the Facebook group. It's called Optimized Life Now, and 
the people in the Facebook group, it's a closed group, so you're safe there. I also have a secret group. You can email me about that if you prefer that. Um, but they say so frequently, I made excuses, I made excuses, I made excuses, and all of a sudden, there were no more excuses. It was just bare, naked abuse. Yeah. And at that moment, it's a horrible realization because you've given so much and you may feel that you've wasted so much. Did you feel like that? Oh, so much. I think the, the hardest moment, well, I don't, I actually I can't say the hardest moment, but I knew walking down the aisle that I was making the biggest mistake of my life. But I was at that point still too scared to make a different choice. Mm. And, and I knew that I was putting my son into a position that was not optimal and, and not, not healthy. And I did it anyways. And I, I have struggled for a long, long time to overcome that guilt mm -hmm. and that, that sense of shame that I did something that was from the outside. A lot of people, a lot of people that I care about told me, that I was making a big mistake and I knew I was making a big mistake and I still did it. And, um, well, the, the hijackal had won you over. I mean, they had brought you over to their side to such a degree and you defended him in this case. It's a man. You defended him so bravely for so long and so boldly and adamantly that for you to turn an about face, particularly just before your wedding was almost impossible. Well, especially since our wedding was a giant production. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, so difficult. So we've got two minutes remaining. So tell us, when was the moment that you said no more? What had to happen before you actually walked out? Um, before I actually walked out? Well, I'd had a conversation with, with friends about, about a week prior, and, and they were urging me. They said, you know, we have an extra room. You and your son can come and be with us. You need to get out of there. He's going to hurt you. And, and about a week later, he did. And um, I had always, always my whole life promised myself that I would never, ever be in a situation where a, a partner, a person, period, um, physically hurt me. And he did. And so I phoned a taxi and put my son in his jacket and we left. Mm. And we didn't go back. Oh, good for you. Because so many people go back and forth. You know, we call that hoovering. The hijackal comes and they're completely contrite and they bring flowers and promise the earth and you get hoovered, sucked back in, vacuumed back in a few times. Well, and, and that did happen to me one time about, about six weeks prior to that. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I left, he hadn't, he hadn't hurt me yet physically but I had left and it was just before Christmas and I got talked into going back for the holidays well that's a big thing we always have to note that whether it's a holiday or a birthday or some kind of celebration they will pray and play on your emotions so thank you so much for sharing your story Jen well thank you for listening it's really important for you to be able to tell your story, but not to tell it too often. You don't want to be re-wounding yourself on the cellular level by telling your story to all people who will hear. So do yourself a favor and work with someone, someone like me, I have clients all over the world, or someone close to you that you trust, so that you can completely feel that you can tell your story in a safe place. And that's really important for you. And so very important to share your story in a safe place, but not to repeatedly share your story. So stay tuned. We're going to be talking about further things about hijackals, abuse, and how hijackals are predators in the next segments. Life as a couple can be exciting and enriching. You both feel supported, known, heard, and appreciated. You know you're safe. Is that what you're experiencing? Does your partner have your back? Can you be vulnerable safely? Do you trust each other fully? Would you say you were emotionally intimate? If not, things can get much better. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, and I work with couples just like you all over the world by video conferencing. If you want a world-class relationship, 
Learn how now. Visit forrelationshiphelp.com slash join and schedule a time to work together. Let's talk soon. forrelationshiphelp.com slash join. Hijackals, those relentlessly difficult people in life. They're toxic, they're difficult, they're disturbing, they make you anxious, and they need to have power over you. They are real relationship predators. And I want to ask you today, are you letting one turn you into prey or have you ever? Is there a partner, an ex, a parent, a coworker, a friend who is still doing that? The problem is that finding out sounds so easy, and it's not. If hijackals were all painted red and easily visible or <laughs> equipped with alarm bells, then you'd clearly recognize them. But it's not so. They're ordinary-looking folks who initially seem to be everything you could ever want. In fact, they quickly do all that they can to make you think you've found your soulmate at last. So it's tricky stuff. There is a person, I want you to know there is a person out there who can be your soulmate. That person is perfect for you in every way and he or she will contribute to your life, making it better than ever with no downsides. Sure, you disagree every now and again, maybe even fight, but overall you feel loved and cherished, important and supported. But I also want you to know there are people out there, I call them hijackals, who appear to cherish and treasure you. They are highly believable, especially at first, and you want to believe them. They seem to anticipate your needs, dote on you, and spend their days finding ways to show you how important you are to them. At first, you're thrilled. Finally, you found the perfect person. Oh, sure, every now and again, they make a little slip of the tongue, maybe suggesting that you have faults. And when you seem upset, they're quick to revert back to their charming selves, all smiles. And when they disappoint you, you are quick to make excuses for them. And they count on this. And if you were paying attention, you would notice that the slips become more frequent. And so do the justifications, rationalizations, and excuses from you. So it's a pretty slippery slope from there. So what are hijackals? These are people who hijack relationships for their own purposes, their own gain, and then they scavenge them relentlessly for power, status, and control. So how would you recognize a hijackal? You think of this. Your partner is charming and delightful in social settings, but harsh and blaming at home. That behavior is so confusing that you assume you're the problem and you feel stuck and caught, confused and betrayed. The ground is always shifting and your partner always tells you that you're wrong, crazy or making things up. It's that simple and clear. Be warned. If that is true for you, there is a very good chance that you're in a toxic relationship with a hijackal. So listen, things will get clearer as you listen to this. Hijackals are everywhere. Some look benign, harmless, even innocent when you meet them. Some are a little cocky, but kind of cute. And others seem like magnets luring you into the depths of their darkness. It's so appealing. Sometimes hijackals appear to be the quiet souls lurking in the shadows. They capture your interest because, ah, you see an opportunity to draw them out. You feel like you could nurture them like a wounded animal. Watch out. Soon they'll be pouncing unexpectedly, keeping you insecure, unsafe, and on guard and on edge. As I said, hijackals are everywhere. Unfortunately, the most likely place to find them is at home. They want to keep their prey close and their nature as a predator hidden. That's why they treat you so poorly at home where no one can see. That's why they make snide and deprecating remarks to you when you're out, making sure no one can hear. So hijackals are often 
a really great congenial lovely outside the home and then they carefully hide and cover up that grotesque and abusive face they show to you. Because hijackals are covert in many cases, they put on a wonderful face at work and at family gatherings and in the community. And this truly becomes crazy making. Because if you were to tell someone how you're being treated at home, you could be met with, how can you say that? He or she is so generous, funny, attentive, caring, helpful to everyone. Know this. The hijackal chose you because you're likely to keep making excuses for them. They, that you'll keep on trying to nurture them. You'll take the blame they place on you. And in fact, you've become their supply. They chose you because you let them behave so badly and you take the blame on yourself. Hijackals act as though they're sure you have nothing more pressing to do than make them happy, meet their demands, and live up to their expectations. A client recently told me a story of what happened to her at a family gathering. She said, I was really enjoying myself, connecting with people I hadn't seen in a long time. I felt free and loved and part of something special with my family and friends. Late in the evening, my partner and I were sitting with the last few folks left and the conversation was getting deeper. You know how that happens at a party. And my partner chose that moment to ask how the next morning was going to go. It was a logical question as many people were from out of town and breakfast plans were all around. And she said, as he and I have only one car, he wanted to know the plans. I wanted to go to breakfast with two women I wanted to have a great heart to heart with and he knew that. So he said that he wanted to sleep in. So easy. The decision was made in front of six people that I would go to breakfast and on my return take him to meet his friends for a late breakfast. A simple, easy, mutual plan. This is what she thought. She thought my breakfast with friends was going well and about halfway through I got a call from my partner and he was angry and he said, how can you be so thoughtless? Here I am awake and no access to coffee. Why do you always put your friends ahead of me? What am I supposed to do now that you've taken off with the car? That just shows me how little you care about me and how much you care for your friends. How dare you? You need to come back right now. Sort of like a three-year-old with a tantrum. <laughs> And she said, I felt terrible. I felt like I was really thoughtless. Do I have a pattern of putting other people first? That's not good. If I really cared about him, I'd leave right now and show him he comes first. How can he be so unthinking and self-centered? So, wow, as she told me this story, I thought about how trapped people can get by hijackles. She was so deeply trapped that what he said to her made sense to her. All that this fellow had to say was in complete denial of the plans that had been made the evening before. He felt good that he got what he wanted in front of everything. He didn't feel good when he woke up, and he was no longer the center of attention and getting his needs met. He had escalated his anger sitting in his room by himself because in that minute he was not getting the attention he felt he deserved, no matter what plans had been made. He took no responsibility for those, nor for his agreement to them. That morning, he had to take her away from her friends and any pleasure she was getting to take care of him. He hit her emotionally where he knew he could get her. He wanted her to think, I'm not a good person. I'm thoughtless. I'm uncaring and I'm selfish. And just to keep the power over, he no doubt added, and you're always that way. Hijackals traffic in guilt and uncertainty, emotional and verbal abuse is often covert. What's most important to hijackals? their own needs, their desires, their thoughts, their beliefs, their wants. They make those very clear repeatedly and they expect you to take them on as your priorities too. After all, why wouldn't you? You love me, don't you? You overextend yourself to give them what they want even well beyond your comfort zone, but it's never enough. And if you were hoping that they might reciprocate, forget about it. Drama, drama, drama. It's exhausting, frustrating, annoying, and crazy-making. 
These are relentlessly difficult people who want and desperately need to always be right, faultless, irresponsible, and center stage in the relationship. Shocked, upset, and unforgiving when not always the king or queen for a day, it's their way or the highway. And when you don't treat them that way, all hell breaks loose. Loving a hijackal means no matter how hard you try to appease them, you'll always displease them on some level because they always want more. And I'm going to talk to you more about how to recognize a hijackal in part two. Hi, this is Dr. Roberta Shaler. Handling hijackles is exhausting. It's never ending. An endless cycle of crazy making, alienation, and constant drama. And cycles are difficult to step out of. I know because I've been there too. And that's why I reach out to you to offer the insight, skills, and strategies you need to heal. My small group programs, Handling Hijackles and Hijackal Recovery and Rediscovery, will shortcut your journey to healing, to save your sanity, and to stopping the crazy making. Visit forrelationshiphelp.com slash join now and let's talk soon. So let's continue talking about hijackals and how they are predators and we don't want to be the unwitting prey. So if everything that I said in part one is sounding familiar to you, then here are seven ways a hijackal shows you his or her stripes. This is really important because you need to see the red flags. You need to see what's happening, whether you're in the relationship, been in it for a long time, or even in the dating world. So here are seven ways a hijacker will show you his or her stripes. And I, am, I really invite you to think about each one without dismissing that with a sometimes but, because that's where you really get into trouble if you dismiss these things. They're real. They're happening. Don't make light of them. So consider the patterns over time not just this single incident here and there. Then you'll have a good idea if you're actually in a relationship with a hijackal. So here are the seven things. One, they dominate conversations and they always want to be the focus of attention. Now that may be that they're the life of the party or it may be that they're covert enough to sit there going, I don't wanna be here, I wanna go home. They are demanding attention. So you've had a rough day and you just want someone to listen, not fix you. And your hijackal says, oh, stop. You're not the only one in the trenches. Let me tell you about my day. There you have it. They have little or no empathy. You've probably noticed that. Sure, they mimic empathy when they want something, but it's not real. It's strategic and manipulative, but it's not real. And by the way, if you're really in denial in your head, you just made me wrong for saying that and you covered it up with, how can you say that? I know he or she really cares deep down. She or he is just insecure, a bit needy, in pain, needing love and nurturing, had a unhappy childhood. You're too harsh. If you said that or any of those things in your head just now, notice, wake up. I'm telling you the truth. Although many of them talk about themselves most of the time because it is their favorite subject, it's really attention and power they want. They will hold forth on pet peeves, political opinions, or why global warming is a myth as long as they are directing the conversation. So remember, they have to be right while they have to make you wrong. Okay, that's number one. Does it sound familiar? Number two. They use your innermost fears, thoughts, and feelings against you. So you're feeling close and safe and vulnerable. It's a lovely time. And you open up, hoping for empathy, maybe a little validation, and definitely some emotional intimacy. A hijackal seizes the moment, encouraging you to share. A hijackal might say, oh, really? You're afraid of the dark. I had no idea. I feel for you. Well, no, they don't because they can't, but they've learned that it's the right thing to say. 
and you would like to feel that they are truly interested in you. You hope to talk about it a little more and gain some compassion and understanding for your fear. You'd like to think that they will help and protect you, knowing that you've just told them how you feel so vulnerable. So you feel heard and safe. Big mistake. You just handed your hijackal some ammunition for a future assault. You gave them cannon fodder. I know, she or he seemed to care and relate, but no. A few days later, during an argument, your hijackal says, and maybe in the hearing of others, Oh, you're such a baby. You're even afraid of the dark. Why don't you grow up? Oh, you, your secrets, your vulnerabilities, your self-respect, and your self-esteem are all unsafe around a hijackal. Those are used to put you down, keep you down, and wear you down. And now you know why. So number three. A hijackal pretends to care about how you feel and then turns the blame on you. Here's an example. Your teenage daughter is acting up at school and you want to discuss it with your hijackal partner and you think he's listening. So you go over the possible ways to handle your daughter and set limits. You talk about the school dynamics. You ask him to be more involved in the situation maybe. And in response, he instantly flips the blame on you. So he says something like, so you think I should care about how embarrassing it is for you to deal with issues at school? I have no problems with our kids, so it's all on you. Don't ruin my relationship with her too. Familiar? Because that's how it rolls with the hijackal. He has no empathy. He's unwilling to possibly accept any responsibility. He immediately deflects all energy from landing on him and diverts it to you. And so vehemently every time. Hijackals almost never accept responsibility for anything except when they want something from you and it's truly worth it to them in the long run. Okay, number four, the hijackals will put their own interests, needs, wants, and wishes before yours. So an example, you want to take the whole family to visit your parents who are getting too old to visit you anymore. Your hijackal says, what makes you think that I have to go along? They're your parents and I'm not taking time out of my life to meet your need for a happy family visit. <laughs> First of all, again, there's no empathy involved from your hijackal side. Also, there's no interest in what you want. Even the question asked was rhetorical. He or she doesn't really want to know why she or he has to go along because he or she is already only interested in winning, being in charge, having power over you. That hijackal really cares only about what he or she wants and visiting your parents is not it. Self-interest is a top priority for hijackals. They start from a position of what's good for me and they go on from there. And when they go after that is usually to go after you. Hijackals are self-involved. <laughs> is there anyone else here? <laughs> Actually, it comes from their abject fear that they are going to be found to be less than perfect. And believe me, they're not going to let that happen. Everything has to be someone else's fault, usually yours. So number five, they take everything to the extreme. You know, remember, disagree with him or her and life will be hell. They take things to the extreme. So always needing control, your hijackal jumps to anger, threats, demands, or even tears over small things. Here's an example for this. You ask her to come along to an important work-related dinner. And she says, what's wrong with you? I have a life too. We're not joined at the hip. You should have asked me earlier. But of course you didn't because you don't have any respect for my time. You knew this would upset me. And I can count on you to always go out of your way to upset me. Damn you, I'm out of here. Tears. Maybe she throws something and slams the door. Winning is everything for a hijackal. They are petrified of anything about them that could be seen as losing or failing. So they're always running both defense and offense at the same time. It's a terribly exhausting way to live, but it's all they know to do. A hijackal will up the ante continuously, no matter how extreme. 
you can say something that is so cool, so basically benign, and even demonstrates love and caring, but the hijackal is not willing or able to accept it because everything is a potential threat. Hijackals work in extremes, in black and white, no gray anywhere. One minute, you're the best thing that ever happened to him and her. Fail to go along with a plan or a train of thought or even her unspoken expectations. And now you're the scum of the earth and she doesn't know why she's bothering to talk to you. That's extreme. Shame, blame, judge, justify, manipulate, repeat. That's the mantra and the formula that the hijackal uses to supposedly keep him or herself safe. Win at all costs to the relationship? Who cares? The relationship's importance to the hijackal, that's mostly a supply chain for their need for power over someone. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Number six, hijackals change their minds, feelings, and focus very quickly and very conveniently. Say you've just had a lovely dinner at home together and you're feeling closed and able to let your guard down. You're feeling safe. For a lovely moment, you see the partner you fell in love with and there's no conflict. It's heaven. So you're cuddling on the sofa in front of the fire and you say, this is just like when we were dating, remember? Your hijackals reply, yeah, back when you cared enough to please me, but that sure changed. Such a slap in the face and a bout turn and you're caught completely off guard and you're hurt. Even the slightest things that things have changed in a negative direction and your hijackal is both defensive and offensive immediately. You didn't say that to set your hijackal off or put him down or suggest he was less than perfect, but that's what happens in his mind though and he's not having any of it. So the last one, hijackals have to win in every situation. Whether it's where you're going for a vacation or what happened to you when you were a child, a hijackal has to be right, especially about how wrong you are. A hijackal might say, mm, no matter what you say, I know you don't want to leave me. You can't manage without me anyway because you're so needy. You can't stand being alone. Pushing me away would be a big mistake. After all, you've told me many times that your life began when you met me. <laughs> Of course, she can be charming, alluring, and magnetic, and of course, he can be amusing and engaging and promising, I guess, but only as long as the spotlight is shining in their direction and things are going their way. Turn it off and things quickly become churlish, manipulative, and even nasty. Hijackals can turn on a dime. Oh yeah, if you're looking for fair, loving treatment that you can count on, forget about it. Hijackals are in it to win it, and that makes you the loser in every case. If a hijackal needs to swear that black is white to win, he will. If five minutes later she has to swear that black is red, she will. And should someone have the audacity to point out that she was in the black is white camp just minutes ago, the hijackal will quickly be shot down with something like, I never said that. Or why don't you learn to listen? You're always twisting my words. Out your hijackal in your own mind. See him or her clearly. Take off those rose-colored glasses. Stop making excuses for bad behavior. Trying to understand will never help the situation. Trying to understand the hijackal, that is. A hijackal culled you from the herd because he was sure or she was sure that you would defend his or her shady behavior. Stop that. Hijackals are not quirky pets you must peas, appease or please. They're dangerous. They'll pounce on you, ripping your self-esteem to shreds. You think they'll change with enough love and time and patience and your unending support and belief in them. Listen up. They won't change. Hijackals are predators, and you're behaving like bait. Stop! It won't be easy, and you'll need expert help to do it. But it's the only way to free yourself from a hijackal, so start now. If you recognize these predatory behaviors in your partner, in these seven traits, 
he or she is dangerous to your emotional, mental, and maybe even physical well-being. It's time to wake up and smell the herbal tea. Come on over to forrelationshiphelp.com. There's lots of blog posts there for you. Or go to my YouTube video channel, uh, youtube.com slash forrelationshiphelp. Take one of my programs, a self-study program, come and work with me, do something, but stop letting a hijackal rule your life. You deserve so much more because you matter. No matter what's happening right now, life can get better. If you have a good relationship, it can become great. If your relationship is in trouble, we can find a solution. The good news is that it's in your hands to start. The not so good news is that it takes time, new insights and skills, and a whole bunch of willingness. But who would settle for less? Not you, right? Good. You want to feel seen, heard, known, accepted, and appreciated. You want honesty, safety, trust, respect, and reliability too. Read my book, Kaizen for Couples, available for download at couplesbook.com. Start there, and let's talk soon. You know, dating is not easy at the best of times, and... There's always the question, you know, can I trust a person? What do I need to look for? Am I flattered that they like me? Am I afraid they don't like me? There's so much going on in the dating world. And so it wasn't long ago that I was asked to write an article for Digital Romance, an online magazine. And and it got me to thinking about red flags that kind of mean long-term trouble, like long-term, like forever trouble. And, and so I just wanted to share a few things about that with you. It's, it, you sort of have that feeling, oh, he just seemed like my destiny, my soulmate. Or if you're a guy, she was all you had ever wanted and more. And the chemistry and wow, and all of that is the way that you report your date to your best friend. So how could anything that felt so good go so wrong? Well, it's likely because you were wearing your rose-colored glasses and you just didn't want to see those bright red flags. You know that less than loving behavior should be rare in a relationship, right? Yet each time your new love is less than loving, Maybe you make an excuse for it. Maybe she or he is having a bad day or going through a stressful time, or maybe they just weren't thinking. Well, it could be. But if it's frequent, it you just might be dating a relentlessly difficult person, a person who simply cannot think beyond winning in every moment. And that means winning over you. So that means winning your affection, winning your attention, and taking you away from other people. So no matter how trivial the issue, she or he must win. And that means you must be wrong. Does that sound at all familiar? And oh, the drama. You probably noticed it. It started small, just a few little slip-ups, a mean word here, a broken promise there. Yet you see, saw those as kind of isolated incidences and you justified them away when you were dating, right? Too bad because they were red flags. You should have been asking yourself, is this a pattern? Am I missing something? Good questions. Then you'd been on the right track meanness or neglect or freakouts or put downs or self-centered behavior. Those are all about taking control and gaining status and demonstrating power. Oh, that doesn't sound very appealing, does it? When it's put in those terms, I hope not because all of those can be a sign of emotional danger. So it's very important when you're dating to take off those rose colored glasses. Those relentlessly pe difficult people that I call hijackals, they're different from other people. With others, you can flow with the ups and downs of life. 
So these people are frequently upset. They're often demanding, thoughtless, controlling. And you kind of get the sense that they think life revolves around them. And as often as though life is out to get them too. So real emotional danger is there. And that might look like demeaning or belittling or tearing down or on the other side, neglecting or ignoring you or discounting you or worse, shaming you or yelling at you or wearing you down or threatening or manipulating or blaming. If those are showing up in your dating relationship, I hope you know that you're in emotional danger. And if you're passive and you don't speak up when you're unhappy or feeling disrespected or ignored, you can become a magnet for people with toxic behaviors. Those people, those hijackals, they particularly like people pleasers and unassertive passive partners. In fact, they actually seek out partners with low self-esteem because they can blame them for everything and they won't stand up for themselves. And in my ebook series, Escaping the Hijackal Trap, I coined that term hijackals. These people, you know, they hijack relationships for their own purposes and then they just scavenge them for power, status, and control. So they need you to feed those needs. In fact, over time, they'll demand that you do so. So you can easily see that finding someone is longing to be or desperate to be in a relationship or to be in love is a perfect match. They've died and gone to heaven when they find someone like that. So bingo. So I want to give you four bright red flags that these emotionally dangerous people, these hijackers flag when, fly when you're dating. One, they yell and scream and demand or threaten quickly in any ar argument. And not only about the little things that They'll yell about the little things, they'll yell about the big things, and they'll yell about the medium-sized ones too. Their emotions are like flash floods. Their intent and their need is to quickly win, take control, diminish and extinguish any thought their partner might entertain about having rights or valid opinions or reasonable logic because it's all about for them being right and winning. And that need to be right and win, they'll go to any lengths for it. That's number one. And number two, red flag. They manipulate people and situations to their advantage. So hijackals excel at manipulation. They'll do anything to get their way. That's the only way, according to them. They will go from seduction, persuasion to cute and coy and childish ways or to anger and demanding eruptions. They'll even turn on the waterworks at will. And if that doesn't work, they'll become demanding, demeaning, and vindictive. And what's the next step up? Emotional or physical violence. Number three, they'll always blame you for everything. They can't take responsibility for their actions. They won't. They're never wrong. Therefore, you have to be to blame and everything, you, their families, the weather, the IRS, anything is their fault. It would be unthinkable for them to even think that they had made a, possi a possible error. This, there ain't no flies on me kind of approach is frustrating, irritating, and it's impossible for you to change. It's unthinkable for them to be wrong because, believe it or not, they're fragile emotionally. They vehemently deny the possibility that they could be anything less than wonderful, successful, and perfect, and they insist that they're justified and rational as well as being blameless. They have to in order to survive. Their behavior causes you to second-guess yourself and question your sanity, and you'll soon turn yourself into a pretzel, and still you can't be enough or good enough. And the fourth red flag? They turn on a dime in a second and with seemingly complete amnesia from one position to another. One minute, you're the best thing since sliced bread. Do say or even intimate that you don't agree with them. And the next minute, you're the scum of the earth and you always were. And all this goes with their need to be right in the moment with that necessity of winning and these emotionally dangerous people see every slight conflict requiring an immediate swift solution in their favor. Kind of like the Queen of Hearts in Alice in Wonderland. Off with their heads. No need to discuss anything or gather points of view. No time to consider options and possible solutions. Just do a 180 and come down hard. 
That's the hijackal strategy for saving their sense of self. There are two words that these emotionally dangerous folks do not relate to, compromise and flexibility. That's because they honestly feel that they could not continue breathing if things didn't turn out exactly as they want them to. So if these red flags are flapping wildly in the breeze when you're being told, I love you in one minute and I hate you in the next, know that you are very likely seeing the red flags of a hijackal in your dating life and get out early. And if you need more information about this, go to hijackals.com and also you'll see there for relationshiphelp.com. Go to my YouTube channel for relationship help. Lots of things there for you too talk soon. There you have it. If you want more, you can work with Dr. Shayla directly. She's eager to help you resolve your relationship issues. Have a question? Call in early to next week's show to talk with Dr. Shayla on air. Get her expert insights and advice by subscribing to her blog, newsletter, and YouTube channel. We're here for you. Don't be a stranger. Join us again next week. And in the meantime, visit forrelationshiphelp.com.